you for joining us on this faithful Friday. Our friends and family, we welcome you. We ask that you join us each week. Give us 30 minutes that we can spend together. Um, I'm May Andrew. And for those who may be new and don't know, you may be wondering why I'm here. You came to hear Elder Andrew teach a lesson. I promise you he's coming right on with it in a few minutes. He asked me to say a few words and I know that he is the Bible scholar and our teacher. There's no competition because I know where my lane is. <laughs> and But he did ask me to say a few words with a focus on the family. And so when I come with him each week, that's my charge. And you may hear me say often things that refer back to what we have to stand on, and that's the Bible, the word of God. And I want us to remember to share that with our families, find a way to get them involved. The reason we put so much focus on that is because that's our guide to everything else that we have to do. We want them to know what our families, our children, our loved ones to know how to get a word, how to get a prayer, what things will help them through a trying times. And you know, in this second month of this new year, we look at our expectations and so far we've all been through something. We've been through something, we're in the midst of something, or we're just coming out of something. And how do we go forward? We have to make a choice. Either we stand on fear and recount all that's happened mm -hmm. and wait for the enemy to bring more uh, destruction and devastation to us, or do we stand on faith? We can either wait for the enemy to move or we can stand on faith and let the God move that's going to come for us and be our help. So please find time to get your family involved with a word study. It can be them bringing a, a scripture to the table. And I do hope you find time to come to your table as a family, as a group, to have time together so that you can teach them how to go out and evangelize. That's a mandate that's been given to all of us to yeah. go out into the world, take the message of the yeah. good news. But they can't go if they don't know what the word says. Yeah. So let's make a choice, the choice to let God move, take us forward as we go into this new year. Have great expectations and let God show you how how big he is and how good he can be to us. God bless you all. Elder Andrew is going to come with a powerful message, and we're all going to learn and walk away as we determine more about speaking in tongues. God bless you all. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Excuse me, with the scooting of my chair. But just want to give God glory and praise for this wonderful woman of God. Before we go any further, I would like to open up with prayer so that God would have his hand and his influence over such an important topic today. Speaking in other tongues, speaking in tongues, a matter of life or death. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you and praise you, Lord, for this day, for having us, Lord, to come in this place to speak a word from you. We thank you, Lord, for the great opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord, that you meet us, Lord, each Friday at 12 noon and speak a powerful word, Lord, to your people, a word, Lord, that would help them to navigate, Lord, in this dark and this evil time. Bless today, Lord. Let your people hear your voice. Let them see your face. That means hide us, Lord, behind the cross, that you, Lord, can be glorified, that your people can be edified, and may and I definitely would be satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, praise the Lord, all of you. I ask you, uh, it's so important that you help us in this ministry, not with your giving. I don't want any money. God gives me money. I, I look to him. I look to the hills from which come in my help. When I need help, God sends me the help from the hills. But I would like you to just uh, like, love, or share this message. When you share this message with your friends, you see, it's not a lot of people talking about what we talk about. Take another look at what you believe. Take another look at your belief system and make sure that what you believe lines up with what the word of God says that your last day 
will you be your best day and heaven will be your home. Everybody ain't talking this kind of talk. Everybody's not talking about heaven and hell and those of us who are walking in the deceptive power of Satan and don't even know it. And nobody's ringing a bell saying, turn, come back. You are going the wrong way. Well, God has designed this program on Friday at noon to have you guys to take another look. Whether you save, whether you've been born again for 30 years, this thing about missing the mark and dying and, and going to hell ain't no joke. So all of us need to keep watch on our souls and make sure that we are lining up dot with dot, comma with comma, crossing the T's where they need to be crossed and doing that which God has said we need to do to be saved. Amen? Amen. I see you, Lord have mercy, my people. Sharon Williams, Kalisa Whitehead, love you, girl. Luann uh, Lucas, the praiseologist, on her job and listening. Glenda Brewer, my, my, my daughter in the Lord. Earlene Lewis, oh, bless you guys in your vacation area. Cheryl Plenty, I call her my gumbo lady because she know how to lay it down for the brother. Timothy Brown, Minister Timothy Fireball Brown, uh, Evelyn Houghton. My, my brother from a uh, uh, long way off, I see you guys, Valencia Harris, we are praying for you, sweetheart. We understand you're going through some things and, and the enemy is attacking you simply because you are uh, uh, aggressively coming towards God. Minister Irvin Bell from Detroit, I bless all of you guys and I praise God for you for being here. I, I, I need you all to like a love and share this message because I want this message to go out. Uh, I know that I'm in some, 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 some deep water here talking about a topic that most people won't even speak about. So y'all pray for us today as we go forth. I'd like to call your attention to Acts the second chapter. We're gonna read verses one through four. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I like to use for a point of thought today, the topic, speaking in tongues, a matter of life or death. Now, most of us in the world of Christendom understand that man needs a savior. We were born dead in sin and trespasses. We were born in sin, conceived in iniquity. We, we, were, we were conceived in iniquity and in our mother's womb, we were born in sin. We came here with a death sentence over our head. Ephesians says that we were born uh, dead in sin and trespasses, but God, who was rich in mercy, wherein he loved us, he quickened us. So most of us know in order to get out of the sin state, for the wages of sin is death, that man needs to be born again. John says that except a man is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into heaven or the kingdom of God. We know that the kingdom of God, we talked about the two kingdoms. The kingdom of God is ruled by Jesus Christ himself. And it is not a democracy. It is not ruled by the people, for the people, and of the people. It is ruled by Jesus himself. So it behooves us to pay heed to what the king is saying. You know, as long as the king 
can be king. The plan of salvation is so plain and simple. It's when man come into the domain of the king that we become confused, we become misled, and we become destined to a place called hell. When man come into the domain, the dominion of the kingdom, and where the king's supposed to be speaking, when man begin to give his interpretation, when man begin to give his ideas, when man begin to say what the king said doesn't matter, he's apt to be kicked out of the kingdom or to be prevented from coming into this kingdom. Now, it's a matter of life or death simply because if the only evidence, if the only proof that man has received the spirit of God, for the Bible say, he that has not the spirit of Christ is none of his. If the only proof that man, if the proof that man has received the Holy Ghost is by speaking in tongues, then those of us who have not spoken in tongues are dead in sins and trespasses. Those of us who are not, let's just say, if the Bible proves that one has to speak in tongues in order to have received the Holy Ghost, that's your proof, that's your evidence, and you don't have it, and you're saying that you have not spoken in tongues, then you are saying that you don't have the Holy Ghost. You are saying that you are not born again. And I talked to you last week that uh, the scripture from Matthew 7 and 21 and 22, when they came to Jesus on that day, all of us have a that day. They came to Jesus on that day and they said to him, hey, hey, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not uh, cast out devils in thy name? Have we not done wonderful works in that name? And listen to what Jesus said. He said, and then will I profess that I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. A couple of things jump up on me. Number one, he's saying, you were never born again. Number two, he said that you were religious, but you were lost. But the biggest thing that jumped at me is that while these people were doing what they were doing, that was not enough to get them saved. He said, and then what I tell them, the question is, why didn't Jesus tell them before that day? My brothers and my sisters, you need to hear this. Jesus is telling you now. Jesus has chosen men to, uh, to put the message into men for men. Jesus has chosen to redeem man that he can go to people who are not redeemed and tell them, man, you need to come on this side because this side is better. I can say that because I've been redeemed. I have received the spirit of God with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I can tell you what it did for me. I can tell you how it revolutionized my mind. I can tell you that I was a cusser, man, when I spoke in tongues, cussing went away. When I received the Holy Ghost, drinking and, and running after women and foolishness of the flesh was a thing of the past. He could have got angels to do this, but he chose us. My brothers and sisters, if God is silent and he's allowing all of this in these churches, man, we got over 30,000 denominations. He allowing this to go on. And then on that day, he going to profess from you, get away from me. Man, how heartening that's going to be when you running up to heaven, man, saying, man, look, I know I got it. Look over at a lot of the little people. You ain't did nothing for the Lord. Here's my resume. And getting from the Lord, waiting for God to say, well done, my good and my faithful servant and hear him say, get away from me. I know you not. My brothers and my sisters, you need to look closely 
at what the Bible is saying about speaking in tongues. If it is, is it the evidence to prove that God has come into you or is this a man? This is what you need to know. When we say that you don't need to speak in tongues, then everybody's all right. You didn't ask the Lord to come into your heart, come into your heart, boom, you okay. And this is what the world of Christendom preached today. Ask the Lord to come into your heart and God comes into your heart. Then they come back two months later and say, ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. How many spirits do you need? If he came into your heart the first time, he can baptize you with the Holy Ghost when he comes in. There's not two spirits, you all. It's only one. And that one spirit, according to scripture, comes in and proves that he is in with outside evidence of speaking in other tongues, inside evidence of joy unspeakable with power over the clutches of sin. So we look at what the Bible says. The Bible teaches us the kingdom of, of heaven, the kingdom of God, the king, Jesus himself, teaches us about three kinds of tongues in the Bible that believers uh, can, can associate with, that believers live with, three kinds of tongues. One, there's tongues to enter the body of Christ, to enter the church. And those tongues come as evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's, that, that, that's tongues to enter the church. The next two tongues have nothing to do with salvation. It's tongues to edify the church. We're going to talk about in 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. And there's tongues to edify oneself. We're going to also talk about it in the 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. The problem comes, my brothers and sisters, is when we lump all of the tongues together to prove your point that every believer does not have to speak in tongues to enter the church. That's the problem. Man has come with his own ways and man with a lack of understanding. And you'd be surprised how many people don't understand that there are three different kinds of tongues that the Bible is talking about. Now today, and I'm hoping to get into the message to give you as much as I can on this very controversial subject. The first one is tongues to enter the church, the body of Christ, tongues to make a person saved, tongues to take a person out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, out of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of God. Now, these tongues were prophesied by Isaiah. In Isaiah 28 and 11, the Bible said, with stammering lips and other tongues would I speak to this people. Jesus was prophesying that there was going to come a time that he was going to speak through his people in tongues. When Jesus came on the scene in Mark 16 and 15, he, after he died, came back to the 12 and he told the 12, he said, look, I want you to go to all the world and I want you to preach this gospel, the death barrier and the resurrection, what I did to take away sins. And then those that believe your preaching of what I did to take away sins and are baptized, willing to wash away their sins, they shall be saved. And those that believe it not, they shall be damned. Then he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. All of the world of Christendom claim that they believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said, in my name, all of those that believe shall speak with new tongues. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak with new tongues. 
So you got Isaiah prophesizing that God is going to speak through his people through other tongues. And now you got Jesus confirming Isaiah prophecy that those people who believe the gospel and baptize who obey the gospels, these are the signs that shall follow them that believe they shall speak with other tongues. And, and that word sign is good because sign is an indication of something to come. Sign is, is something you can look for to prove that what, the, what is coming have come. Glory be to God. So we go to John, the third chapter, verse number five, I believe, or uh, three, that says that except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in three and five, it says, except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Listen to what he says. Let me turn to John, the third chapter. I want to read this to you and uh, just look at these couple of points he says. He says in verse number six, he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. My brothers and sisters, it ain't an option. You must be born of water and spirit. You must be born again. He didn't say, uh, you may, uh, you can choose to. No, you must be. And then he says this, the wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound there. The wind blow and you hear the sound but cannot tell whence it come. You can look at the trees and see that. The trees are just moving and the wind is blowing. You can't see where it come from, nor do you see where it's going. You just see the effects of the wind blowing. He said, and whether it goes, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. Now, when we look at our text for today, it fulfills what Isaiah says that he's going to speak to his people in another language. It confirms what Jesus says that on uh, that those that believe in my name shall speak with other tongues. And now here comes John telling us another sign of how that's going to look. So in our text today, we find that, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came, there it is, a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, the wind and the sound that John says that everyone is born of the spirit would go through, the wind and the sound, you hear the wind, you, you don't see it, but you don't know where it came from, nor do you know where it goes. He said, everyone is born of the spirit is going to witness this kind of manifestation. He said, and there suddenly came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them, what? Cloven tongues. There are the tongues again, you all. And these tongues weren't necessary for the disciples. It was not necessarily for all of the religious leaders that was there. But these tongues was for us in this day, letting us know that everything that was prophesied is happening right here just like Jesus said it was going to happen. So on the day of Pentecost, they, they were sitting there and they appeared upon them clothing tongues like as a fire. Don't you remember what Jesus said in Matthew? That Matthew said that I indeed baptized you unto repentance with water, but there will come one that whose shoes I'm not even worthy to lash. 
he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Here come the Holy Ghost and these cloven tongues were lack as fire. All of the prophecies are coming to pass on the day of Pentecost and it sat upon each of them. Now, I need you to know that the each was 120 plus and the mother of Mary who brought Jesus into the world was there in the upper room to get the spirit, the Holy Ghost. My God, if Mary had to be there, you need to understand that you need to be there also. And, I, and unto them, cloven tongues, lack of fire, sat upon each of them. And they were not 10 of them, but they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Prophecy, you all, just what he said. You can't leave out the tongues because it means you're leaving out what they told you, what Jesus told you, that would be your sign. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. My brothers and sisters, they spoke because the spirit gave them the language. They didn't have this language. The spirit gave them the language to speak. And my brothers and sisters, they mocked them, said they were drunk. And Peter stood up and said, hold it, hold it. This is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel that said that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is how it will look. My brothers and sisters, like I say, the kingdom of God will be plain and simple. If man have not walked into the domain of God and start saying something different, I mean, he laid it out. Play. Well, God didn't say you have to speak in other tongues to be saved. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost and tongues are synonymous. They came together. They don't have to always say Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues because when they say you were filled with the Holy Ghost, they knew the evidence were you were speaking in another tongue. There was not another Holy Ghost. There was not another way. My brothers and sisters, you sound like the dark ages. You sound like the Catholic church that came in and tried to destroy this doctrine of justification, this doctrine of being baptized in Jesus' name, this doctrine of speaking in other tongues as the spirit of God gave the other one. The Catholic church came in and changed it, but with God, it never changed. So all of these daughter churches, Protestant churches, all of these churches that protest at one time against what the Catholics taught, never came back to the doctrine of the Holy Ghost. They have eliminated the need to speak in other tongues. Let's look at what the Bible says in Acts the 10th chapter. This is very telling because that came, that was for the Jews. And all these Jews, they went out to their different homes and they took this doctrine with them. But listen to what happens when Jesus sent Peter to the Gentiles. In Acts the 10th chapter, let's turn to maybe verse number 44. Acts 10 and 44. While Peter yet spake the gospel, these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, Peter and the Jews, which believed were astonished. So they believed salvation was only for the Jews before then. As many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also, just like it did on the day of Pentecost with the Jews, that on the Gentile also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know that? For they heard 
them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? My brothers and sisters, he came to the Gentiles speaking in other tongues. He came to the Jews speaking in other tongues. What make you think that this Jesus, who's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, have changed and the gospel, has sent another gospel? There's one group say you have to speak in tongues. The other group say you don't. What make you go with you don't when Jesus has given you prophecy and given you great examples of how? This came to pass, how people receive the Holy Ghost. And my brothers and sisters, that was over 2,000 years ago. But in my lifetime, I tried this. I fought this, but I tried it. And my brothers and sisters, when the Holy Ghost came, and I knew he came because I was saying hallelujah, and something took over my tongue and began to speak a language that I did not know. And man, the joy that filled me, the renewing my mind, everything changed when I spoke in tongues. And it wasn't the tongues, you all. It was the Holy Ghost coming in me that signified he was there with this sign, this evidence. Why walk through life, my brothers and sisters? and don't have proof that what the words say is what the words say. Why don't you take the word and put it into your life and try it to see if this is indeed what you have to do? My brothers and sisters, if the Bible say that you have to speak in other tongues and you haven't, then we got a problem here. We got a problem. You're going to wait until you reach heaven and hear God say, now I'm going to tell you. And you're going to say, you know, Milton said that. He was telling the truth. Man, it's too late. Don't leave your soul unprotected. Man, I, I, I think my wife could live off of $50,000, but I want to double that to make sure that if something happened to me, at least she can have my pension, my security, and some insurance, bro. I don't want to leave and look down and see she's struggling. Don't leave this earth with whatever God is offering from heaven. What are you going to tell him? I thought I already had the spirit. I knew that was in the Bible, but I didn't think that was necessary. Look at witness number three. Let's turn to Acts 19. And I'm going to close on this, and next week we'll pick it up. We'll talk about uh, how another tongue, uh, these other two tongues, uh, have nothing to do with salvation, but they're very important in the plan of God. In Acts, the 19th chapter. Give me a few minutes and I'm going to close it up. 19 and 1. And it came to pass that while Apollo, Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? He didn't say, have you spoken in other tongues? That, that didn't come up. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard of whether there be any Holy Ghost. That's the world of Christendom. Man, they have, the devil has come in and sent so many falsities so many lies, so many distractions that we don't even know that we need the Holy Ghost. We don't even think about it. All we think about is believing in the gospel and we are saved. And God is saying, oh yeah, believing in the gospel is a initial part, but you got to obey the gospels. Faith without obedience, without work is dead, you all. So they say, we have not even heard that there be such a Holy Ghost. People ain't even telling you about it. People don't even preach about it. They preach about everything, but they ain't telling you about the Holy Ghost. They're not telling you about what the Bible says. 
how the Holy Ghost come. Now, he didn't ask them, did they speak in tongues? He asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said, well, not whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said to them, until what then were you baptized? And they said, until John baptized. He knew that was a belief system that wasn't the will of God. It was a starter point. It wasn't the finish point. And he began, and, and, and he said, uh, it didn't say Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. My brothers and sisters, tongues and the Holy Ghost are synonymous. I need you to hear that. I need you not to give up until you take another look at what these scriptures are saying to you. Not what man is saying. Man, there are a million tapes on uh, baptism in the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. Man, millions of videos. I didn't go to either one of them. I went to my experience. I went to the word of God and I went to Jesus in prayer. My brothers and sisters, I want you to gain off of my experience and I want you to go in prayer, taking the word. My brothers and sisters, don't let him say it's too late. Don't die and have a simple thing. See, the price Jesus paid was the work, y'all. He didn't got beaten, bruised, came out of heaven, living on this earth with these dirty, filthy people, a holy God, and got wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, for the chastisement of our peace, and with his stripe beaten. We are healed. That's the hard work. All he's saying to us is to believe him and to obey him. My brothers and sisters, why go to hell when all you need to do is to believe God and to obey God? Now, next week, we're going to talk about tongues uh, to edify the church and tongues to edify oneself. It has nothing to do with the plan of salvation. Nothing. And I'm going to show you that on next week. If you're bold enough, if you're brave enough, if you want to know truth enough, you'll come back and you hear the explanation of speaking in tongues in the three forms and the three ways that God has given us. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we close here today, Lord, and project to finish on next week, we pray, God, that your words, Lord, have resonated into the hearts and the minds of those, Lord, that needs to hear it. We pray, God, that those of us who have received it are bold enough to tell people, Lord, you need the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. God, let your will and your way be, God, the will and way of your people. And God, let those that have ears to hear let them hear, and those that don't have ears to hear, open up their ears. Give them the mercy and the grace that you gave to me one day. I remember, God, and I give your name the glory and the praise for it. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I'd like to thank you all for coming on. I, I see you, uh, John Lucas. John, Pastor Lucas, man, I don't know what I'm going to do with your lesson you did uh, on last week. It was just awesome, man. As usual, bro, you and your wife, bless, I call it the Lucas Wednesday. You all take over and you do what you do. I see you, Tanya Mars. We are praying that God would do what he has claimed in his word that he would do. He would fix it, Lord. He would fix it. So we, we thank you all for coming on. I, I think I've called my Lucia White. I saw you, you're still hanging in with your program of motivation. Keep on keeping on. I see, I, I think I've seen everybody. Rhonda Blair, bless you, my sister. Thank you for coming on with your astute self. Uh, I think I've called Tyrone, Pastor Tyrone Kaiser, my buddy, my 
friend, my great teacher, fireball preacher, and singer. I never forget you, Brother Tyrone, and 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 what you're doing for the Lord even on this day. Uh, I believe I've called those people. Nicholas Davis, who is still praying for the recovery of you and your baby. God is able. Uh, I think I've called Lenny Cooksey. Oh, my brother from Carolina. I love you. We miss you guys. Uh, Tyrone, the mayor of New Orleans, Murray. Love you, my man. Glad that you tuned on. I think I've called everyone, everyone. I think I didn't want to leave everybody. Ellen Dora, glory be to God. Thank you for coming on. Hope we said something to help you with what you were discussing to uh, with your friends. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. But anyway, glory be to God. We thank you guys for coming on. We thank you for praying for us. And come back. We're going to talk about speaking in tongues, a matter of life or death. It's in Jesus' name, my brothers and sisters. You all be blessed. Until the next time.